Hey, what's going on everyone? This is uh, First Reaction TV. My name is Jay Mart. Uh, today we're going to be watching a video that has been circulating around the internet here in the last couple of days of Don Lemon back in 2013. And he, uh, he had a, mes a message for black people, I think was the uh, uh, point of the segment. It was called Five Things for Black People. And like I said, this was on CNN back in 2013, and I figured, you know, let's check it out. I've seen like a couple clips of it. I haven't watched the whole thing, so I'm interested to see how much has changed in those. Uh, well, hell, I guess it's been ten, yeah, ten years now since 2013. So uh, let's check it out and see what Dawn has to say. Please, black folk, pay attention to and think about what has been presented in recent history as acceptable behavior. Pay close attention to the hip hop and rap culture that many of you embrace, a culture that glorifies thug and reprehensible behavior. Let's talk about race. Let's talk about black on black violence. The outrage that I have is in the lack of really the national attention to what is an epidemic of crime in the black community committed largely by blacks. Why aren't we talking about it? Good question. So listen to this. The reason there is so much violence and chaos in the black precincts is the disintegration of the African-American family. Wow. Wow. CNN is using clips and talking points from Fox News. And it seems like Don's on board with that. Like, that's... Holy s <laughs> Could you imagine if that was happening right now in 2023? Oh my gosh. He's got a point. <laughs> in fact, he's got more than a point. Bill? Raised without much structure, young black men often reject education and gravitate towards the street culture, drugs, hustling, gangs. Nobody forces them to do that. Again, it is a personal decision. He is right about that too. But in my estimation, he doesn't go far enough. Because black people, if you really want to fix the problem, here's just five things that you should think about doing. Here's number five, pull up your pants. Walking around with your ass and your underwear showing is not okay. In fact, it comes from prison when they take away belts from the prisoner so that they can't make a weapon. And then it evolved into which role a prisoner would have during male on male prison sex. The one with the really low pants is a submissive one. You get my point? Number four now is the N word. By promoting the use of that word when it's not germane to the conversation, have you ever considered that you may just be perpetuating the stereotype the master intended acting like a nigger? A lot of African Americans took offense to that too. And I wondered if I gave the right advice. I really did. But confirmation came the very next day on my way home when I exited the subway on 125th Street in Harlem. This little kid in a school uniform, no older than seven years old, he was crying his eyes out as he walked down the sidewalk with his mother. I'm gonna be honest here. She turned to him and she said, I'm sick of you, you act like an old ass man. Stop all that crying, nigger. Is that taking the word back? Think about that. Now, number three. Wow. Wow. Oh, my God, man. What am I watching right now? Look, I, I, I think the clips I saw were like of the, the saggy uh, pants part. Dude, I had no idea they were going to get into this. He actually said, I think, what uh, what was it, Bill O'Reilly? Was that his name? Uh, the the uh, old... Um, <laughs> I think he was fired from Fox at one point. Anyway, um, the fact that Dawn said that he didn't go far enough, um, I'm, I feel like I'm in an alt alternate world right now. Um, and I mean, this is crazy to see, like, this is insane. This is CNN and Dawn Lemon. Respect where you live. Good Start points. small by not dropping trash, littering in your own communities. I've lived in several predominantly white neighborhoods in my life. I rarely, if ever, witness people littering. 
I live in Harlem now. It's an historically black neighborhood. Every single day I see adults and children dropping their trash on the ground when a garbage can is just feet away. Just being honest here. Number two, finish school. You want to break the cycle of poverty? Stop telling kids they're acting white because they go to school or they speak proper English. Over the course of a career, a college grad will make nearly a million. Wow, man, look at those, look at those price differences. 19,000 high school dropouts, 28,000 high school graduates, and 51,000 for uh, college grads. That's crazy. I mean, that's, you know, when you look at college grads and then go back to dropouts and you look at the, uh, the difference there, I mean, that is the difference between poverty. Like, that is the difference. That's crazy. And look, these are all good points by Don. Like, I... You know, if you're trying to, uh, you know, have a, a non-biased approach here, not, you know, and just tell someone the truth and not hurt somebody's, or not being worried about hurting someone's feelings, or not worried about offending the masses, like, I, I agree with all these points, and like, in my opinion, this isn't just for black people. I mean, like, look, this is for white people too. There's a ton of white people walking around with their pants hanging down around there, you know, back then, and, um... You know, I all these points are valid, and like they're good points for any person. Million dollars more than a high school graduate. That's a lot of money. And number one, and probably the most important, oh, man. just yeah. because you can have a baby, it doesn't mean you should, especially without planning for one or getting married first. More than 72% of children in the African American community are born out of wedlock. Oh, that my means God. absent fathers. And the studies show that lack of a male role model is an express train right to prison. And the cycle continues. Look, I couldn't agree with that more um, at all. I mean, the, especially the, the family point, um, the, the father aspect, um, not being, you know, raised in a home with uh, a, a single parent or, you know, uh, uh, basically a house that is in conflict you know at all times um, I, I completely agree with that um, <clears throat> it's it's crazy that that Don was willing to say those things you know on on his television show like that that almost seems like like the fact that it's you know OMG I can't believe he's saying this stuff right now just shows how much our society has changed and the past 10 years um like he would like right now he's be basically being kicked off tv because of how much he has conformed to the masses he's gotten demoted and demoted and demoted um right now at cnn to where now he's the host of a morning show and honestly i th i think it's because you know he, he doesn't say things like that anymore he's or not things like that but at least willing to um not be a robot and have an honest opinion or have an honest conversation with someone and not just, you know, conform to what the audience or um, the people at home want to hear, what they want to be told. Because um, right now, what I decided to do was that I there, there was another uh, interview that um, Don Lemon did with actor Terry Crews back when the Black Lives Matter movement started. And I just, I was curious to see, because I, look, I, I I don't have a lot of, you know, different Don Lemon, you know, favorites ro rolling around in my head about, you know, different videos or different um, newscastings that I've seen, you know, with him in. But I knew um, there was a controversial one back with Terry Crews, and I wanted to see if his opinions changed and how much they have changed or what what he would say differently or how he would even act, um, you know, just in the current um, society that we live in. So let's check out another video of Dawn. I think this said it said this was you know two years ago so it would have been you know back towards the start of the or the middle of the black lives matter movement so let's check it out let's see how much dawn has changed let's see if his views changed or see if you know he's still willing to you know say something honest all right everybody please listen to this segment because actor and activist terry cruz facing backlash for tweeting we must ensure black lives matter doesn't morph into black lives better here's how he explained it 
Uh, are we are all white people bad? No. Are all black people good? No. Knowing this reality, I stand on my decision to unite with good people, no matter the race, creed, or ideology. Uh, given the number of threats against this decision, I also decide to die on this hill. You know what? I'll just I'm I'm, I'm going to get back to the video here quick, but you know what? Good for him. Good for Terry. Um, I I didn't follow you know this a lot back then. I, I wasn't big into following the news you know when I was younger. So I'm just now kind of picking up on a lot of this stuff. I haven't seen a lot of these clips. But good for Terry. Like good for the person who says, "Hey, I don't care what color you are. I don't care what gender you are. I don't care where you come from. If you're a good person, then I'll accept you, and you'll accept me, and we can be good people together." That he's basically saying that. I'm not going to conform to once again what I'm being told to think. Like that's that's all Terry's doing here. Oh, Terry Cruz joins me now. Terry, and the fact that you get backlash for having your own opinion or having your own point of view on something, like uh, it's 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 unfortunate that that's where we live. Man, hey. you stepped in it. <laughs> You say that you're willing. Yeah. To, you say you're willing to die on this hill. You've taken a lot of heat for this. Explain what you are thinking uh, and why it's so important that you die on this hill. Well, again, you know, I want to bring up the fact that you know there are some very, very, you know, militant type forces in Black Lives Matter, and what I was issuing was a warning. You know, it's one of those things where I've been a part of different groups. I've been a part of different things, and you see how extremes can really get, can go far and can go wild. And then when you issue a warning, and when a warning is seen as detrimental to the movement, how can you ever, ever have checks and balances? Um, you know, in, in the 60s and 70s, airplanes went down all the time. And the reason they found out why they did was because the pilots could never be questioned. And when you have the leaders of the Black Lives Movement who are now talking about, you know, if we don't get our demands, we're going to burn it down. Uh, other black people who are talking about working with other whites and other, uh, other races, they're, they're being viewed as sellouts or called Uncle Toms. It starts, to, it starts to, you start to understand that you are now, you know, being controlled. You're not being treated as loved. You're actually being controlled. Someone wants to control the narrative. And I viewed it as a very, very dangerous self-righteousness that was developing that, you know, that, that really viewed themselves as better. It was a, almost a supremacist move. So let, let me jump where in, Where they viewed that For, black li their black lives mattered a lot more than mine. Okay. You know what, Terry makes, makes a, a ton of great points there. And, you know, what he was basically saying was, you know, that... He, he was trying to basically speak his mind and say, hey, you know, I'm obviously for black lives, you know, black lives mattering, but he was kind of warning of the extremes and where it could go to if, you know, you take it to a certain level. And what happened was he got a ton of backlash for it. And, you know, just like he said, he was called names and Uncle Tom and this and that. I mean, a, a bunch of unfortunate stuff simply because he had an opinion and because not only that he was trying to express a reasonable opinion and he was met with a ton of backlash for that and look i mean that that happened to a ton of different people during that you know this time frame during the early black lives matter movement was well if you didn't say it will you say it will, will, you better say it if you won't say it then you're a racist you know you're a racist and like Obviously, everyone knows every every Black Lives Matter or every Black Life Matters. Like that was always like a given, and people that were like in a non-biased state, not you know, um, people living in their community communities, they they already you know knew that or had this view. Well, yeah, everybody matters. Like of course. So it turned into this thing of like, well, everybody matters, but you need to say this or else you're a racist so then like everyone you know has to go along with it and when someone like terry says something different than that where he's saying like look guys don't take this too far don't burn down your towns don't burn down your cities don't burn down your communities and <laughs> for saying that you know terry got the the raw end of it
So let me jump in here. There's a lot that you said. So let's let's see let's see if Dodge changed his views at all now. Um, you you think Black Lives Matter is you said it's a you think it's an extreme movement because it's now part of the no. But this is the thing. It's a great mantra. It's a true mantra. Black lives do matter. Matter. But when you're talking about an organization, you're talking about the leaders. You're talking about the people who are responsible okay, for I got putting you. these I things got you. together. I got you. I got you. So let me, but you, you, Terry, you realize that even during the civil rights movement that uh, Dr. King was seen as extreme. That movement was seen as extreme. To people who don't want to make change, um, movements are s seen as extreme. You can paint them easily as an extreme when they are not. So, I mean, I'm going to say this pretty quick. I mean, if, if you do any research or if you look up the people that, that started Black Lives Matter, like the actual organization, the actual group, um, the women in charge or the two leaders, um, from what I have read, they are on, they are on a very extreme side of pretty much all viewpoints. Um, they did want to destroy communities. They did want to defund the police. And I'm not talking like, like, you know, take a little bit of funding away from them. Like they wanted to, to destroy it. That no police anywhere. Destroy every, they, they were Marxists. Um, they wanted to blow up the entire system. And those were the people that are in charge of Black Lives Matter. Like, they're still in charge. They've stolen and taken tons of money, you know, out of the donations, all the money they received. I think her, the one uh, woman's brother, bought like a $350,000 mansion for himself. There was like a bunch of other stuff. I think there was like over a million dollars missing from the donation. Like, once again, you get back to, there's, there's, what Terry's saying here is that there's two different things. There's black life, black human people, and they matter. Over here is the Black Lives Matters movement and organization. And that's a separate thing from the first. They're two separate things. And I think Terry recognized who these people were that started the organization, that were running the organization, and what their true intentions were. Where they were and are sort of like a black supremacist type of thought process and it turned into not you know the fact that dawn compared them to martin luther king is just martin luther king even fighting for equal rights and fighting um you know for that movement back in those days when things were so violent and things were so hard especially for the black race and even back then, as bad and as hard as things were for them, um, Dr. King still wanted a nonviolent approach. And on top of that, Dr. King was still willing to work with no matter what person and no matter what their skin color was. The Black Lives Matter movement was not that. So, like, let's, let's be clear about that. That is not what the Black Lives Matter organization, okay, was or is. Um... And they're just, it's unfortunate, they're two separate things, and when you get caught up in that game, it's like you, you try to stand up for it, and you say, well, I'm not with a Marxist, I'm not with someone who thinks black people are better than every other race, you know, I'm not with the people that are stealing money, money from their own, you know, movement or charity or funding that all this money's coming in for, I'm not with those people, and if you stand there and say that, then you're, well, you're a racist, right? White supremacist. And it's like, no, the, you know, they're separate. And it's, it's really hard to get that viewpoint across. And I feel bad for Terry because I think Terry was doing the right thing and he got a lot of shit for it. This is very true. But also, you know, when you're talking about MLK, you're talking about Nelson Mandela and even Malcolm X, they all realized that you had to have a non-racial component to these kind of movements or there will be resentment. There will be get back. There will be, one of these people will tend to, you know, listen, I don't want to move from one oppressor to the next. And one thing is really Who's, shocks who's me the next oppressor? At, who's the next oppressor? Oh, when I, when I describe this, when you look in the city of Chicago, there are nine children who died. Don jumped on that pretty quick. Who's the next oppressor? Who's the next oppressor? He wanted Terry, 
Like, he's, like, trying to get Terry caught up here. Like, you can tell, like, he's looking for that gotcha moment. And where Dawn has that high and mighty, you know, condescending attitude. I, by gun violence, by black on black gun violence, with uh, from June twentieth all the way to today. And you're talking about even with the Atlanta child murders, there were twenty eight kids who were, who died during, in two years. You're talking about a month, and you have nine black kids. And the Black Lives Matter movement has said nothing. About this what does kind that of have thing? to do you with know, equality, though, it, Terry? I have to. Tell, I don't understand what that has to do with equality because they're, they're. Listen, there's crime. There are people in those communities who are. Those people aren't just being nonchalant about, about gun violence. I lived in Chicago. There are many people who are working in those communities to try to get rid of the gun violence. It's, the gun culture in this, in this country is prevalent. But I don't understand what that has to do with a movement that's for equality for black people. It's. It, it, there, it's not mutually exclusive that if you care about equality for black people, that somehow you're going to stop um, random violence or, unfortunately, kids from being shot. It just seems like apples and oranges. Oh, my gosh. Well, one, it, I mean, it is apple and oranges. Um, what Dawn is bringing up has nothing to do with what Terry just said. Um, you know, what, what Terry's saying is the obvious, that... You know, there's kids dying every day in these cities. There's, you know, constant violence and robberies and murders, and it's going on constantly. And what he's basically trying to say is, like, and we all know this, like, it's not covered by the news. There, are, there is an uproar about it. You know, it's not racially divisive, so it's not on CNN now. It's not on MSNBC now. It's not on Fox now. You won't see back and forth because it's not a black versus white thing, where Black Lives Matter was that. Um, and, you know, to bring up the you know, don't even say it's gun culture. The guns are already outlawed and, and illegal in, in virtually every major city in the United States. Guns aren't legal. In those, like, they are outlawed and banned in those cities. And this still happens. You know, so, like, the gun culture statement, the apples and oranges thing, like, yes, like, it is apples and oranges, and Dawn is just completely off base here. Black Lives Matter wasn't about equality. Like, when you look at, once again, the, the corporation or the, 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 I don't even know if you want to call it a company at this point with the amount of money that they brought in, the actual organization um, was not about equality. They wanted destruction. They wanted to destroy the local or any police department. They literally wanted, like, to destroy it. I'm telling you, when you actually, like, go back and you read the founders' Um, opinions just on everything like it's 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 very disturbing like it is extremely disturbing so once again you're back to this apples and oranges black lives matter yes they do the organization is is borderline an extremist group I mean you know it, 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 it's not that way you know this is the thing Don you know black people need to hold other black people accountable I said this the same thing this is a, a, the black America's version of the Me Too movie. That's what Don just said in his last video. Don had five things that the you know the black community could do um, to to help themselves and Terry just said black people need to hold black people accountable. So let's let's see what Don says <laughs> says to basically Don's own statement, you know, that or the Don's own viewpoints that he had. If anything is going to change, we ourselves need to look at our own communities and look at each other and say, this thing cannot go down. And, and this is the thing, too. There are a lot of great, great people there who are held hostage, who are held hostage by people who literally are, are, are running these neighborhoods with violence and then claiming that Black Lives Matter. When you look at the parents of these little kids who are mentioning, saying, hey, man, why aren't they speaking up for me, too? And then this is what I'm saying. It's, it, when I look at this... I, I understand what Terry's saying here, and, you know, it's sad, and you can actually feel that emotion inside him, and you can feel how much he's invested in that, and he's talking about these communities that are, you know, uh, mostly minority-ran, you know, in the big cities that are where the crime rates are just through the roof, and even in 2023 now, you know, with 
it's it's virtually every city in America right now. The crime rates are through the roof. Um, it's it's you know carjackings and murders and robberies and assaults and it's just it's sad and that's what Terry's saying that you know there's a lot of good people in those areas. There's a lot of minority people in those areas, and you know you're talking about a massive movement that collected probably you know a hundred million dollars in charities that you know was for destroying police departments where if anything you know these communities needed them more they needed better police officers they needed better trained police officers they needed um, police officers that you know aren't obsessed with power and that you know are there for the right reasons that's what those communities needed not to destroy everything because you know, whenever you see these communities are left to, to be ran on their own, they, they're they riddled with crime and drugs and fights and murders and carjack. I mean, it's, it's, it's sad. It's sad. And that's where, I guess it's, it's where you stand, um, what your beliefs are and stuff. And with Terry, he's saying that, look, I know this isn't a good idea. Burning down your community and destroying its, um, you know, local police department is not a good idea for these people that are just trying to get up and go to work every day and raise a family. Um, and I, I feel what Terry's saying, man. This whole thing about, you know, it's about who is controlling the narrative. It's, not, it, it's got to be all Black Lives Matter. And what's happened is that because I even challenged it, because I even questioned them and warned okay, people, Terry, I, I became sick. Like, I, if I, I told get you it. to wear a mask, but program, Terry, they want to kick you out. You're, you're a high-profile person. You're writing things out there. You know you're going to get backlash. You know people are going to respond to what you're saying on Twitter. So you, I, I just I don't think you should be surprised by that. I, you know, I have a, a skin as tough as an armadillo because of what I do. And <laughs> I think maybe you should adapt that. But here's, here's what I have to say. Don Lemon's uh, tougher than Terry Black Cruz. The Black Lives Matter movement was started because it was talking about police brutality. If you want an all Black Lives Matter movement that talks about gun violence in communities, including, you know, black communities, then start that movement with that name. But that's not what Black Lives Matter is about. It's not an all-encompassing. So if you're talking about, um, if, if someone started a movement that said, uh, cancer matters, and then someone comes in and says, why aren't you talking about HIV? It's not the same thing. We're talking about cancer. So the Black Lives Matter movement is about police brutality. No. You know what? I'm going to call complete bullshit on that. Complete bullshit. His analogy there is, is bad, you know, to begin with. If anything, what Don tr was trying to say or attempted to say, he's talking about you know, his, his cancer analogy, what it would actually be like was if you said cancer matters and then someone over here said, well, yeah, pancreatic cancer matters too. They're still both cancer. They still both matter. And that's what Terry's saying, right? That's what Terry's saying. Dawn gave some bullshit analogy again about apples and oranges. He's still, once again, he, Dawn's the one that's stuck here. Dawn's stuck on apple and oranges. Dawn's stuck on two separate things. Terry's stuck on the same thing. Black lives matter. That's what Terry is saying. He's saying that both matter. And what's happening is, is that the small, you know, minute, um, you know, conflict in, in, the, in the black community, um, you know, with police departments, he's saying that, hey, there's a massive other issue over here with drugs and crime and guns and children dying, but we're still focused on this little thing over here. So once again, to use the cancer analogy, it's the same thing, right? It's the same thing. It's just two separate kinds of cancer. And Dawn is just so off base with this shit that it's just... This is whenever you, like, can't even take him serious anymore. Like, Dawn's intentionally trying to get him caught up. And what, what he's saying, Dawn has to be smarter than this. He has to know what he's saying um, does not hold water here. Brutality and injustice in that manner, not about what's happening in black neighborhoods. If you, there are people who are working on that issue. This is everything to do with what's happening in black neighborhoods. Like, that's what the entire Black Lives Matter movement was about. What happens in black neighborhoods? Like, Dawn is... And if you want to start that issue, why don't you start it?
Do you understand what I'm but, saying? But when you look, but when you look at the organization, police brutality is not the only thing they're talking about. I know that. Uh, I agree, uh, but that's not I, what the Black Lives I, Matter I, movement I, is about, I, Terry. Black Lives Matter is about police you know, about, brutality they, and about and about criminal justice. You know, it's not about what happens in, in communities. Dude, stop trying to drown him out. It sounds like one, they they're intentionally muting Terry here, and Dawn is just regurgitating the same, you know, well, you better say this or else you're gonna get backlash, Dawn. Like what happened to Dawn from ten years ago? Where's that guy? Where's that guy about family and you know protecting your neighborhood and self-respect and you know respecting the community like where's that Dolan because that that's not this guy that's not this guy saying Black Lives Matter is not about the black community or black neighborhoods like did he just say that like that's what Dolan's argument is here is when it comes to crime black on black crime people who live near each other black people kill each other same as whites. Eighty-some percent of white people are killed by white people. Right. Because of proximity. Very true. It's the same thing with black people. But that I happens can't. in every single I neighborhood. Right. But that doesn't, again, I'm not you saying know, that's not like important that those, those, those kids die, but it's a different people. movement. I, I, listen, I understand what you're saying. I it's amazing how every time Dawn actually stops talking, Terry's mic works perfect. Like, have you noticed that? That every time Dawn speaks... This dude over here, Terry, is completely drowned out. Like, I know it looks like he's lagging a little bit, but the second Dawn stops talking, all of a sudden, Terry's mic works fine. That's a joke, man. That's a I totally understand. It is about police brutality. That should never be accepted. Yeah. I am not saying that that's not it, but they are. there's more there. Okay. And when I look at, the, if they have more on their agenda, we need to ask them about what else is on that agenda right. other than police brutality. And that's all I'm doing. Questioning, I got you. warning, watching, and if that bothers you, now that bothers I'm me. Over. Because over if Terry. I can't warn you, we are equal. If we're equal. I should be I able to go, say Terry. something. This is this is funny to Dawn now, right? He had a guest on his show to talk about the black community and black lives, and it's funny to him. Right here, these two separate faces on the screen right now, this shows the wealthy, um, the, I'm trying to think how to say it, the condescending mentality of, of the privileged who, who, who isn't actually worried about it. Um, this man right here, he had, he, he's not worried about it, right? He's not. I'm sure he he's he's got a uh, a beautiful home, a nice neighborhood. Um, he's nowhere near near any of the tragedy that's that's going on. The man on the other side that is invested in this, where Black Lives actually means something to him, um, that is the man, and that is the man I see in Terry Crews. That is the man that is fighting for actual, real social justice, real social justice. Not destroying neighborhoods, not tearing apart communities, not burning down, you know, people's businesses, looting stores, destroying, um, you know, police departments just to pieces whenever these communities need them and they need better officers and better funding um, to get, you know, some of these, you know, crackhead a power obsessed, you know, cops out of these places. You know, they they need better better people there. And situations like this with the man, you know, that's smiling right now, it's why no one wants to be a cop in the United States right now because they have to deal with people like him. Um you know, this just it just doesn't even seem like it's a uh it just doesn't even seem like it's an issue to Don, man. What happened to him? You know, what happened to uh, 2013, Dylan? I got to go. I got to go. We'll see you. Terry, thank you for coming on. I appreciate it. Well, let me know what you guys think. Um, it's crazy how much has changed. Um, I, uh, I, If you guys made it to the end of the video, I appreciate you watching this far. Um, I think this stuff is very important to discuss. I think it's 
this stuff is very important to society, but I also think that it is beyond, beyond important not to drown out people's voices and opinions who might say something different from your opinion. They may be wrong. They may be full of shit. They may not make any sense. But there might be someone out there that does and that you can learn from and that you guys can have an honest conversation with and better your community, better the world. Like actually, you know, talk and listen to each other um, the way things are supposed to be. Not this just, you know, baiting someone into a conversation to see if they say the wrong thing. And if they do, we're going to put it on social media and shame them later. Like, I just... Uh, it's a shame. It really is a shame. Let me know what you guys think. Thanks for watching. Like, subscribe, please. Send me a message or a link if you guys want me to check something out.